In this segment, we're going to compare size of light source. Adorama TV presents Photo on the Go with Joe McNally, where you'll go behind the scenes to see how great photos are made. Here's your host, Joe McNally. Hi, this is Joe McNally for Adorama TV, and in this segment, we're going to compare size of light source. We're going to use three different sizes of soft boxes, and one of them is going to be a different style of soft box. In other words, two of them are direct soft boxes, and one is an indirect, and we'll see how that interacts with our subject. Okay, to experiment with these soft boxes, we are truly blessed because we're in a very beautiful place. We're in the jungles of St. Lucia in the Eastern Caribbean, and even more blessed, we have a wonderful subject, Claudette, who's one of the most beautiful singers I have ever heard. And she also has one of the most gentle personas I've ever had in front of my lens. And I feel very graced by her presence. And we're going to shoot some pictures. And she is putting up with us. She's being very patient. So uh, the first thing that we're going to do is use this small direct softbox. You can see here, not particularly sizable, okay? So that'll be our first light source. The perhaps somewhat downside of it is just the size of it, you know? Uh, you can use it for, you know, to put it into small places and, and this and that, but as a portrait light, it has a certain crispness or um, harshness, if you will, uh, that is generally associated with a smaller light source. Harshness is perhaps too strong a word. It's a nice light, it really is, but it does have a definitive sort of fall off from highlight to shadow. And because again, the size of the source, that fall off is pretty rapid, pretty dramatic. So we'll use this in our first iterations uh, with Claudette. We'll take a look at this beautiful jungle background and we'll light her. She's an open shade, of course, which is your friend in a scenario like this. That means you're not uh, blinding your subject or cooking them in the hot sunlight. And also you have control over this area of exposure. And then I'll use a longer lens. I'm gonna be using a 70 to 200 today to kind of piece out certain areas of the environment in the back and try to use the, the nicer parts of them, the ones that are lit and place Claudette in orientation to that. All right, so uh, I'm gonna talk to the flash. It's a quadra flash, 400 watt seconds asymmetrical ports. The small octa is on there, okay? I'm gonna to talk to it with a Skyport radio re uh, receiver transmitter setup, okay? Nice thing about these is that the Quadra has a receiver embedded inside the pack, so I'm gonna transmit from here, and I can talk to the pack, literally. I can adjust it power-wise up and down in tenths of f-stops. My baseline shutter speed is a 200th of a second, and that is because I, I don't want to go to 250 because with a, um, a power pack like the Quadra, I'll get a thin band of darkness on the bottom of the, my frame oftentimes. So I stay away from 250 and I start a third party power pack. In other words, something other than a Nikon speed light or if you're using the Canon system, the Canon speed lights, they all sync at 250. But with the bigger packs, it's safer, I find, to um, use around 200th of a second. That way you get a complete coverage of the light. And now I'm gonna take a look at composition. And the light, as you can see, because I'm working somewhat full length environmentally, the light is a, is a fair distance from Claudette. And Claudette is, as usual, being very patient with all of our shenanigans here on the set. All right, beautiful. Okay, so we got a good exposure at 200th of a second at f6.3. Not a bad place to be. It means I have good detail in the jungle, in the background, and I have good light on Claudette. Albeit a little bit hard, just in the sense of the distance and size of that power pack. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over and move the, uh, the whole arrangement a little closer to her and see if I can get more purchase out of the small light source. Now that should give me just a little more coverage, a little tiny more softness. And of course, it's not a TTL light. I moved it closer to her. So at that power rating, she's gonna be a bit brighter due to the just simple fact of exposure. Wonderful, beautiful. 
it's a really nice portrait. Um, it's got edge and drama to it. Again, it's the smallness of the light source and the distance from the subject that's giving that crispness and that rapid fall off into shadow. All right, so as you can see in the background, hopefully, we've changed up the light source. We've gone from the small octa to what is known as the deep octa. It's still a direct softbox, meaning the, the actual flash head itself is pointing towards my subject, but it is considerably bigger and it's deeper. If you notice the profile of the first light, fairly average. This light now has a deepness to it and it collimates the light and I find it to be a very, very rich uh, light source. So let's see what this light does now. All right, here we go. Beautiful, Claudette, beautiful. Okay, let's take a look at that. It's pretty nice, it is definitely smoother. Still directional, still has fall off, but it has a certain richness and creaminess to the light that um, is uh, just a really, really beautiful light source. It also falls off, it gradates as, um, I have full length pictures here. The, uh, the value down at Claudette's feet in the guitar is gradated down. So again, the, those ed that edge baffle is working for me. It's keeping the light collected up around Claudette's head and shoulders where we really want it to be. So I made a, uh, I've, I've kept the deep octa in play because I like the light, it's very nice. Uh, but I thought I'd bleed in a little more ambient light and brighten the background. Now. Uh, there's two different ports on the Quadra and that gives you a good range because the A port you get 100% of the value of the pack, the B port you get 30% roughly. So what I did was I switched into B port and the Quadra has a range of 400 watt seconds to 6 watt seconds. So now I'm all the way down minimum on the pack. That has forced me to open up my f-stop a bit, go from 6.3 and I'll probably now be in the realm of maybe F4 to eight and a half, somewhere's in there. That does a couple of things. It brightens the background because I stay at two hundredth of a second for my sync speed, and it also softens the background and throws it a little more out of depth of field. And the bleeding in of some ambient level of life, light, which is going to occur in this instance, might also soften up the shadow that is naturally being created by the softbox and the position relative to Claudette. Let's take a look. Beautiful. If you notice, I can shoot so fast now at six watt seconds. Just click, 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 and that's not a bad way to work. Okay, so now we made another adjustment, a third softbox. It's a different size, it's a bigger octa, and significantly, it's a different style. It is an indirect softbox. In other words, the flash head is inside, and it's not pointing towards the subject the way it was in the first two. It is pointing away from the subject so it's washing into the silver skin of the reflective interior of the softbox and then radiating out through the diffusers. So the result is not only is it a big light, it's an incredibly soft light. So let's see what this light does and see which of these you know might be appropriate or the ones that we like. There's nothing right or wrong about any of these lighting solutions. It's just a different style and the principles of light, you know, are at play here. The bigger the source, the more softness and wrap that we're going to get out of that particular light source. Okay, I'm going to ask you, Claudette, to slowly walk in towards the light source, please. Great. Perfect. Now, she has moved closer, so I'm going to put a little more f-stop into my solution here. I'm going to go to f9. going to take a stop out. So what I'm doing now is just kind of playing the game of ratios. Whatever exists compared to what you layer over what exists with your flash, that's constantly the game you play with shutter speeds and f-stops. Bringing the background up or down, bringing the foreground up or down. And as always, as a flash photographer, when you think you're going to make a flash portrait, ironically, the most important light that you confront on location is the available light because that condition drives your solution. It drives your source, oftentimes the choice of your source, the choice of the power that you're going to put into that source, all those things. Okay, so quickly we just went through three different light sources in basically the same position relative to the subject and just compared and contrasted what those various sizes did. 
from a small to kind of a medium to a big light source and also experimented with a little different style of softbox and indirect. That was the biggest one that we used. And you can take a look at the results from sort of a little bit harder with an edge all the way through something that's very, very soft. And it's all about the size of the light source and the closeness to subject and your options in terms of light shaping tools. Once again, it's Joe McNally for Adorama TV with a segment on size of light shapers. Adorama TV is brought to you by Adorama, your best source for the equipment and knowledge you need. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. Place your order by 7 p.m. and it ships the same day. Plus, the next time you're in New York City, be sure to visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. Check out the Adorama Rental Company for professional cameras, lighting, computers, and more. We'll help you make the best selection to match your needs while giving you the knowledge to achieve the best outcome from your rental. Adorama is your complete solution for equipment, printing, training, and more. Adorama, more than a camera store.